All right. Hello. Uh, my name is Long. I'm a research associate at uh, SD, uh, the Institute for Computational Design <laughs> and Construction at University of Stuttgart. I was um, a first-time hackathon attendant <laughs> last year in Munich. This time, I'm coming back with uh, more <laughs> members from ICD Stuttgart. <laughs> but this time, actually, I'm just fooling around in Berlin mostly, <laughs> not doing any hackathon <laughs> coding for sure. Anyway. Um, so I'm, today I'm going to talk about DynaShape. This is um, a package uh, for Dynamo that I started developed since last year hackathon, and I have been keep working on that um, since the hackathon last year. So this thing has been a bit more than one year old now. Of course, what you're going to see now is, of course, uh, has been developed much further than the first version in uh, in Munich uh, last year. So DynaShape is. Um, a package for um, Dynamo, and it has meant two usages. It basically, it um, helps you form fighting either by simulate physics, so you can like form fight uh, tensile structure or catenary shells, as I will show in a live demo uh, in, in a minute. And then the other way of form fighting is that you kind of solve uh, difficult um, multiple often conflicting geometric constraints uh, when you, for example, when you, when, when you have a double curved surface and you want uh, um, certain panels to be planar, uh, no angles is too small, for example, the kind of constraints are kind of hard to solve directly by hand because there's so many of them and usually they are conflicting. And DynaShape can kind of help you solve that uh, or at least propose a solution. And the final usage is a, a strain for optimization where you already have more or less um, kind of Relatively well-defined geometry, and just you just want to like tweak it a little bit to make everything more um, sensible, more easy to fabricate or to build. The the package is completely free and, and, and open source, and so that is the GitHub uh, repo. Uh, also, it was written entirely in C sharp, and it was set up in such a way that you can extend it without modifying the core source code. So, if you want to define custom constraint um, um, that doesn't come with DynaShape, you can do so with, with C sharp. Um, I will show you the um, many examples um, that features some of the built-in and kind of um, basic constraints, and you see how they, they can be applied in an uh, architectural design context. Um, well, actually, this is um, rather the most basic <laughs> application, just a straightforward um, panelization uh, uh, optimization constraint uh, with DynaShape. So that is before DynaShape and after DynaShape. Um, but let's get to something a little bit more exciting. So l l let me, um, for those of you who are not familiar with the idea of like geometric constraint solving, uh, let me give you a quick, um, simple demo. So here, um, okay, I will need. Him, um, I'm gonna do a live demo, so I need two hands. So if you're gonna hold the microphone for me, can you stand aside so that people can see the screen? <laughs> 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 All right. Um, so this is a very simple example where you have like uh, a series of uh, vertices, uh, red here, uh, connected by the black lines. Now, the, the, the black lines just for visualization. The, the red vertices are what we are after. So let's say that we want to put a constraint over this um, series of vertices and force them to be on the same circle. So I can set up this uh, circular constraint, and if I run the solver then the solver will automatically force all of the red vertices to be on the same circle. The circle can like have an arbitrary uh, position and radius, but they have to be on the same circle uh, non nonetheless. Uh, there's another constraint uh, it's called the uh, equal length constraint, which force each pair of vertices to maintain the same distances. So if I run this constraint, you will see that you know, if I move one vertices, the other vertices will have to move to, to make sure that they all have uh, equal distance uh, pairwise. And the crucial thing is that they do so by moving as little as possible, um, just, it, just enough so that the, the, the uh, condition is uh, satisfied or the constraint is satisfied. Now I can combine the circular constraint uh, and the equal length constraint and ask the solver to solve both of them together. So if I have two constraints, uh, this is what the results look like. Okay, so equal distance and co circular. Now in this simple case, you may ask yourself, like, I don't need DynaShape. I mean, this is so obvious. I can solve it on a piece of paper. <laughs> you know, it's just a circular arc. But um, 
in a more complex system where there are more things that are conflicting with each other, then it's become almost impossible to solve by hand. So this time, I have a 2D array of vertices you know, in the x and the y dimension. And through each row of vertices in the x and the y dimension, I apply the co-circular constraint and the equal distance constraint. So now, at first, they are already satis satisfied. Um, you know, they are already equal distance and already co-circular. But if I go in and disturb one of the vertices, you see how the other, the other vertices will automatically move to maintain the constraint. So if you look at each row, they are own co-circular and have equal distance. They lie on different circles, but each of them has to be on the same circle, for example. And imagine if you are a kind of designer and you want to design a double curved surface, let's say a roof, for example, and, and you said, okay, I want to make this roof out of you know, um, linear elements that form into an arc and has equal distance because they are quite easy to document and uh, manufacture. Uh, then, yeah, th this kind of tool can help you explore what kind of shape is possible if you design with those constraints in mind. And uh, it might not be even obvious to begin with. So, like, even before you start designing shape, if you ask you, can you come up with a double curved surface where you can make up, where you can build just using c circular arcs that can be break into an equal distance? It might not be an obvious to you that the solution exists in the first place, right? And here, not only the solution exists, there are more than one solutions. And, the, and, and, and this kind of tool uh, help you explore uh, the space of all the possible solution. And as you can see, the solution is not even symmetric, right? Uh, so if you come up with this like by hand on a piece of paper or like do some like, geometric analysis, you might come up with a, a symmetric. But as you can see, um, the, the solution can be non-symmetric as well, for example. Uh, so this is the live interaction mode. Uh, let's say that once you are happy with the result, then you can pause this over, and then you can turn off the fast display mode. This will make DynaShape output a real Dynamo geometry, uh, which is just the polyline here. So if I watch this node, you can see that like uh, you can see uh, you will have like real poly curve, just dy Dynamo poly curve that you can use further downstream. So you, you can place adaptive components or curtain panels on them, for example. Uh, the next one is a very simple constraint as well, con just the length constraint or the length cone, in which you force two pair of vertices to maintain a certain kind of distance. So here, if I move one vertices, the other vertices will move so that the distance is maintained. And again, the crucial part is that the other vertices will move as little as need. You know, this vertex can totally move to the other side and still satisfy the constraint. But you know, it's always choose to move as little from the original position as possible because that's arguably give you the most intuitive solution when you explore the, uh, um, the, the, the solution space. Now, in that simple example, you won't see this part of using like a single length constraint for DynaShape. But if you apply it to a chain of vertices, then you can simulate a physics of a spring without even doing the full physics simulations. So here, a series of vertices. For each pair of vertices, I apply the, strength, uh, the length constraint to force them to maintain the original length. Now, if I run this over, and if I disturb one of the vertices, the length constraint will force the other one to, to move as well. I'm actually not doing like full physics simulation here. So for those of you who like doing spring particle simulation, it looks like spring particle simulation, but this is not even that. It's just constraint solving. There's no force, there's no mass, there's no velocity here. Uh, it's just a poor uh, constraint solving. And turn out that the math behind constraints, uh, geometric constraint solving is also kind of similar to the math that governs the physics of a piece of string. That's why you have the illusions of you know, a string being manipulated in vacuum or in midair. So what is the application of this kind of thing? Um, for example, um, you can simulate um, a 2D tensile structure easily. And this time, you have um, a 2D uh, grid. And then if you um, put in a length constraint, then you can simulate a kind of um, a membrane that is resistant to stretching, right? And then I, you can anchor the four points at the corner here. And then some anchor points. And then you can kind of do like interactive real-time tensile design inside uh, Dynamo. And you know, changing an anchor point or setting up a new anchor point is just a matter of adding a few Dynamo nodes. So you know, you don't have to build a physical model now. You can do everything in 
in uh, Dynamo in like uh, the standard kind of beam environment or, or beam tool that you're familiar with. And at any time, once you're happy with the result, you can generate real Dynamo geometry, which is the black lines here, just the standard Dynamo poly, poly curve geometry that you can use for, for the downstream. Uh, I have a more complex uh, tensile example here. No, not this one. Uh, please excuse me. <laughs> okay, so this one is a large, relatively large tensile structure that is based on mesh toolkit, um, by uh, which was um, kind of developed or integrated into Dynamo by uh, Kif. Um, give it a bit of time to start. So it's generating the mesh. So this part is even before DynaShape started kicking in. Okay, here we go. Uh, so this is quite a large membrane. So each of the uh, edge here is governed by one length constraint. So this is like a lot of like constraint in one go, and DynaShape will solve this simultaneously together with with the anchor point constraint. Um, and also you see the red lines here. The reds are also um, length constraint that we use to simulate cable. So the cables will attach to the membrane, and then we will attach them to this little structural frame here. Right, And everything is, uh, you know, again, fully interactive. So um, now I can go in and change, let's say, I can change the length of um, the arc. So, so the, the gray arc here is just like standard dynamo geometry. Now, if I update it, uh, you might see something a bit funny because you know DynaShape geometry will update before Dynamo geometry because it's actually run faster than Dynamo geometry. So if I move the arc to 35 highs, you see the arc like actually lag behind the DynaShape geometry uh, quite a bit. Um, and let's say I can change the length of the cable, the, the red cable. Um, Uh, where is the cable? I think here. So I think they are at three uh, units length. I can change them to, let's say, six. See? Or, you know, I can make them almost non assistant by zero. So again, everything is fully uh, interactive, and this runs um, quite fast in, in inside Dynamo. Now, the last constraint that I, um, well, actually, the, <laughs> the second to last constraint I want to show is the share matching constraint, which uh, also one of this one is actually one of the most versatile and useful constraints in uh, DynaShape. So this one meant this this one uh, this constraint acts on a set of vertices and force this set of vertices to assimilate the shape, a predefined shape. Uh, in this case, I force this the blue guys here to assimilate the shape of the black geometry. Okay, and when I turn on the solver, immediately they will assimilate the shape. And if I move this guy around. Then the other vertices will move so that they, the shape is still maintained. So overall, it acts like a, a solid geometry. Um, so what is the application of this? Um, so one, this cone is the most one of the most versatile, and it has many applications. But let me show you one. So uh, this is a pretty famous uh, rotating square pattern in 2D. You know, uh, pattern that make up of identically sized square. Uh, here the thing is, in 2D, it's kind of obvious that you can do this pattern. But the question is, can you cover a double curved surface with this pattern? If, if you design it, imagine that you design a facade or a roof, and you want to cover the roof with like identically square elements, which is very easy to manufacture and example, right? Uh, and uh, assemble. So by applying a shape matching constraint on each square to force them to stay as a square, and only like let each of the square, or, you know, each pair of square will share one vertices then you can start to explore what kind of double curved surface that you can form with these constraints in mind. All right, so give it a, OK. So now if I start a solver, if I start to move the vertices out, you, you see things start opening up. So each square will 
you know, still try to be a square and they share the vertices, so they still interlocking with each other. And I can form kind of double curved surface and start to explore kind of, you know, what kind of geometry that I can build out of these identical uh, elements, for example. Also, the shape matching that I apply here, you know, is actually not a square. So I told you that I, I constrain a square to be a square, but actually the shape matching happens at a box level. So if you look at the red, the red vertices, you see that it actually has a certain height, right? So even though I only draw the bottom of the box, which is a square, but actually the shape matching acts on a box. So instead of locking, so it's square, instead of only locking at one corner, they're actually locking at two because it's a box with a thickness, and that thickness provides bending resistance. So if I run this again with a very thin box, so this time, uh, the thickness of the box is very small, which means that you know it's almost like a square, and this will behave almost like a piece of fabric because there's no bending resistance. So if I pull this out, you think that you see that how things wrinkle and crease, just like a soft piece of fabric, which is probably not very useful for uh, foam fighting if you want to desire a roof. But if you want to like provide some bending resistance, which in effect will smooth out the geometry overall. So if I put in a little bit of thickness here, and if I run this again, then this this time you know the, the square will be locking at two points, so they're free to rotate this way, but not this way. So now things, you know, kind of smooth out more. There is less wrinkle and it's kind of more useful. So by just changing the height of the box, uh, we can control the bending resistance or the level of smoothness of the resulting surface. Now, uh, the next one I want to show is um, pressure caused by air trapped in an enclosed volume. Now, the enclosed volume is uh, described by an enclosed uh, mesh using mesh tool kit. So a little um, mesh box. I, let's pump air into it, and it become like a balloon floating in in vacuum. And now if I interact with that, then uh, this is pretty much describe the physics of an uh, an air bubble floating in uh, va in in vacuum. So what this constraint does is that it apply a force that push all of the vertices out outward in the uh, vertex normal directions. But the strength of the pressure is not a constant thing. It's automatically adjust according to the volume. So as this thing expands, the pressure will goes down. And if if you squeeze this thing in more, then the pressure will go up. So if I pull this thing out, you see that the you increase the volume effectively, and the pressure as all the part has to decrease. So this is in according with the so-called Boyle's law that you know um, describe the relationship between the volume and the air. So if you want to make this thing bigger, then effectively you need to pump more air or heat up the air inside the volume. And this e is equivalent to you know, changing this constant. So I call it a volume pressure constant because in physics there's actually no dedicated name to it. It just describes how much air is trapped inside that volume at a particular um, uh, temperature. So if I increase this, then basically I can have more air. OK, so what is the application of uh, this constraint? Well, you can use this to form fight a pneumatic um, structure. So here I have a little membrane. Just let it come up. Uh, OK, little membrane flat. Uh, I anchor the boundary, and I anchor like five points in the middle. And now if I pump air in, they will start to you know, inflate, and you can uh, you can play with the uh, the pressure strength. So higher pressure, more things, you know, it's more inflated. And then, yeah, you can play around with this, and you know, you can change the anchor point um, and start from finding like pneumatic geometry for uh, pneumatic uh, structure, for example. So anyway, so those are the uh, some of the basic constraints that uh, come out of the box with Dynashape, but. Uh, the way Dynashape set up is that you can use C# -sharp to define a custom constraint with our modifying with our modifying the source code, and you can plug the constraint in the same solver together with all the existing constraint. And what the solver does is that it will solve all of these constraints simultaneously. So, if your system, if there is a perfect solution, the solver will find a perfect solution. In case um, there is no perfect solution, which means that 
all of your constraint is like over constraint. There's, there's no way that you can satisfy all of the constraint altogether. Then the solver will find the best, con like the best solution, which means that the solution that comes as close as possible to satisfy all of the constraint in terms of minimizing the, uh, the squared uh, error. Okay, so um, anyway, I think that's the end of my uh, live demo. All right, thank you. Oh.